Right, so this is a client's computer. Um, it's running okay. The, uh, the thing that it's been uh, doing, though, is making a lot of noise um, coming from the cooling fan inside. Um, and the client tells me that uh, this has gotten worse over time. Um, what I generally do in that case is, you know, assume that there's a dust buildup in the, uh, the cooler. Here are the, uh, the exhaust vents. And um, I would take a, a blower, blow through there, and then a whole bunch of dust would come out. And ordinarily that uh, would make the, uh, the computer run cooler and quieter because the fan doesn't have to work as hard. But in this case, there was zero dust that came out of it. So it's still um, relatively loud. What I'm thinking is, is that the, uh, the thermal compound between the processor and the cooler has deteriorated over time. Sometimes it just dries out and stops being as effective. So the heat doesn't get transferred to the cooler well enough. And then the fan uh, ramps up trying to blow the heat out, but of course it can't because the heat's not actually making it all the way fast enough to, uh, to the cooler. So what I'm going to do is open this up and replace the thermal compound between the processor and the cooler. Um, to do that, it looks like it's going to be a bunch of screws on the back that need to come off, and then this back will separate from the, uh, the palm rest. I'm going to look this up. The writing here is way too small for me to see. What I did is I took a picture of it with my camera. And what I'm going to do is go on my diagnostic computer to Google and do a search for the model number, which is 15-AX033DX, and the words service manual. All right, this first one looks good. Scroll down and find the service manual. And what this is going to tell me is how to take the laptop apart. And it'll be down towards the bottom. So there's like a, an explosion of the different parts. It gives you all the part numbers. Right, so looks like all the screws out of the bottom and it's talking about a plastic plug, which I think is that right there that needs to be taken off. Yeah. Occasionally on laptops, you'll also have to remove these rubber kind of feet here, but in this one, it doesn't look like you have to. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just go around and take all the screws out. Okay, that one is a little bit thinner than the one on the edge. That one too. Okay, yeah, so the ones on the corner are thicker screws. I think these are M3s, whereas those are M2 size. What I'm going to do is just lay the screws out, uh, kind of in relation to where they're coming out here. There's another thin one. far along the bottom. This guy right here, just gonna kind of get under it. There's some tweezers. Nothing there. Okay, no, no screw under that. So I'm not sure what the directions we're talking about with a plastic plug on screw number one. Okay, according to the directions, there's supposed to be a plastic plug right here covering up a screw, but there is not. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. So then use a nylon flake tool. I've never heard it called a flake tool. I, it's, I, I call these spudgers. And separate the bottom from the top. It doesn't tell you to do this, but in order to actually do that, you have to turn it over and open it up. Otherwise, you can't get to the seam. But generally what you do is you stick a tool down and separate. The palm rest, which is the keyboard and the trackpad from the bottom half. You just kind of take it around the edge. Corners are tough. Okay, 
So all those little clips are undone. Close this very carefully, not pressing it together, otherwise it could reconnect itself. So now I should be able to kind of get under here and lift it up. Although it does feel like there's something there. It doesn't want to let go at that center point. Look at that again. Maybe I just didn't go deep enough. No, there's definitely nothing there. Let's try going around the side. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of lifting up all around and feeling where it's stuck. If it's not stuck there, maybe it's under here. Let's lift this up. No, it's not there. So where is the resistance? The directions say lift the front in order to access the internal clips in the battery area. Okay. Apparently I just needed to pull harder. <laughs> All right, cool. So, Here's the cooler. Um, looks like it's got a, a separate graphics processing unit, uh, separate from the CPU, and two exhaust fans, which look relatively clean. Um, I hit them with a little bit of air. I'm just gonna kind of hold them still. Yeah, that's pretty clean. Right, well, let's uh, look at taking the cooler off and replacing the thermal compound. So, okay, so this is marked 6, 5, and presumably this is 4, 3, 2, 1 in some order. Okay, there's 1. I'm not seeing the 2. All right, so if this is one, more than likely, this is two. This is probably three, and this is four. You generally wanna do this in the order it suggests. All right, so that's off. Let's see. Yep. Gonna come right off. Right, well there's the thermal compound. It doesn't look bad. I'm gonna grab some fresh and we're gonna clean it off. It's a little on the dry side. I think this will help. I'll grab a little bit of alcohol and clean that off. It's not coming off very well. So this is 91% isopropyl. What I generally do is put a little bit in the cap and then kind of put some on. Yeah, that came a whole lot cleaner.
right. And then I'm also going to clean off the two processors. I would say that this is the Intel CPU and the other over there is a, uh, I think it's probably a NVIDIA GPU. Yep, NVIDIA. Okay, pour back in the alcohol we didn't use. Ended up with a bit of a pool of alcohol there. Spread it out, it'll dry up. Right, so to apply fresh thermal compound, what I generally do is put a little bit in the middle and on this rectangular CPU, I'm going to put kind of a little line. It doesn't take much. And I don't spread it out manually. What I do is I just put the cooler back on. And when I tighten down the cooler, it will spread out the compound. dry off that that extra okay so I'm just going to put it right down where it goes and we'll do one, I'm not tightening these down right away. I'm just getting them started, just giving a couple of turns. All right, so one, two, we're gonna call this one three, four, and we got five and six. Right. So now we pop this back on. And we can put all the screws back. I'm going to go ahead and do the two that were bigger. And they are in the corners. So this is a Hitachi powered screwdriver. Right now it's on the highest torque setting, 21. If I knock that down to 1. And I put these in. What it'll do is the clutch will kick in so it doesn't over tighten. That's one thing you don't want to do is over tighten screws, especially in a laptop, because they generally are embedded, the nuts that the screws go into are embedded in plastic, and that stuff breaks. Plastic sticker. All right, so let's turn this back on and we'll get 
logged back in. All right, well, let's open up Chrome and get it connected to Wi-Fi. Right, so, so far the fan is much quieter than it was before. I'm curious as to what the temperatures are and how fast the, span, the fan will spin if I give it something to do. So I'm gonna go into Google, I'm searching for IDA64. I'm gonna get the extreme version from the download page. Getting it directly from them usually takes a long time. I find that Tech Power Up has a fast download. Yeah, it's already here. I'm gonna click to run it and go through its installer. Uncheck documentation and tell it to launch. So they give you a 30-day trial. And what I use it for is under tools and system stability test. And it's been running for a few minutes. It looks like the CPU is somewhere in the high 50s to low 60s. That's pretty good. Um, right here it's showing you the percentage of CPU usage. What I'm going to do is hit start. And what this is going to do is stress test the CPU and the memory. And that should make the, uh, the CPU run as uh, hot as it can. The fan ramped up just a little bit, but it's much quieter than it was before, just overall. So it's been running at max CPU for 30 seconds, and the, uh, the temperature is staying about the same, 50s, maybe occasional low 60. Well, it's a definite improvement. So that was how to improve the cooling on an HP model 15-AX033DX. Thanks for watching.